All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I was changing the strings on this guitar the other day and I realized I don't think I ever made a video on this Chibson. Uh, so as the title says, this is supposed to be a Chibson Les Paul Jimmy Page, you know, replica or, or whatever, you know, whatever they want to call it. Um, I did not order this one, so most, I've never ordered, oh, I'm sorry, I've ordered one Chipson uh, from eBay, but all the rest of the Chipsons I have, I've gotten through other people around my area. Um, but, you know, this one is no exception. I've had this one probably almost a year, and I thought I made a video on it, but I was looking in my videos and I realized I didn't. So I changed the strings on it the other day, and I was like, oh, okay, well, you know what, let's, let's make a video. Uh, so this thing... I mean, it, it looks nice, you know, it's got a nice paint, kind of paint job on it here. One thing I noticed right there, there's two things when I went to the guy, I got this on OfferUp, I traded him a Squire, Fender Stra uh, Squire for it. Um, the first things I noticed right when I saw it is take a look at this headstock. Look, look at that. I mean, that is just the, you know, <laughs> that is not a real, I mean, you know, I could understand them not doing like fret nibs correctly or, you know, minor details. But I mean, that, the, the, you know, the open book headstock, this literally looks like a mustache to me. One of those old school mustaches. Uh, and then you can see on the back, it's supposed to have that fake, says Jimmy Page, you know, JP number, whatever, uh, on the back there. So that's the first thing I noticed was the headstock. The second thing I noticed, which I won't be able to show on camera is the neck on the the neck when you grab it I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it you know most necks are you know they're like C shape right there they have a nice round uh, you know kind of feel to them right it's like a baseball bat cut in half right where the round part is on the bottom and it's flat on the top the, you know or some of them are D shape C shape whatever this one it goes like, it goes like this, then it shoots down, then over, then up, then like this. It's like a, if you can imagine a stop sign, cut the stop sign in half and the bottom half, how it's like, eh, 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 like that, that's what this neck feels like. So that's kind of what I noticed right away. Um, and it just feels weird to play it. It's not super thick, you know, like a, like, Again, it's not a Louisville slugger neck. I mean, I can I can play it, but it it just feels weird, especially going from like a like a Charvel or an Ibanez with a very thin neck, and then you grab this thing, and you're like, like what am I feeling here? It's it's very odd. Um, no scarf joint that I can see. You know, uh, they got another. The, the paint looks pretty good. Um, so these. I changed out these knobs just because I needed them for something else, another guitar. But I don't know if you saw them. It came with locking tuners. The guy put locking tuners on here, which are nice. Um, you can also see, look at the truss. I should have showed this before. Look at the truss rod cover. Let me put it straight. Look how crooked it is. Like, I mean, again, I know it's a chips in, right? You get what you pay for. I didn't order this, but I mean, come on. Like, when you're drilling holes, you can't, I mean, you can't line it up. Like, that just, ugh. Anyway, I mean, this guy had pictures of himself. Like he, he played with you know this on stage, and I and a lot of, actually, it, it's kind of a good idea. A lot of people that I've talked to, that I've gotten these chips and from chips and from and other places, you know, when I ask them, I mean, I ask them, you know, why why do you get them? And a lot of the people I get them from are like gigging musicians, and they say because you know they they want to look the part, right? They want it to look like they're playing a Les Paul but they don't want it to get like, if they brought a real Les Paul out, you know, they don't want it to get stolen or broken. If somebody, if this breaks, it was, you know, 250 bucks. If it gets stolen again, it was 250 bucks, 300 bucks. A real Les Paul, you know, they bring it out, it gets knocked over, right? So that's, a lot of them say that's why they do it. Um, so when I went to this guy's house to get this, you know, he had pictures of himself and, uh, you know, st on stage playing this exact guitar. So. I was like, okay, you know, it, it, it had some issues when I first got it. I don't know how long ago he played it, but like the pickup was set so high, it was rubbing on the on the strings. So it was, you know, had this awful buzz. Um, the, I don't know what pickups in here are in here. I never took it apart. 
they sounded okay to me. Again, I use a Helix, so I can kind of pretty much make them sound like whatever I want. So I wasn't really concerned with that. Uh, I just liked the look of it. I wanted like a burst Les Paul. I didn't have one. He wanted, you know, he wanted to trade, so I traded him for it. Um, the the hardware on here, this stuff down here, super cheap. Um, you know, it. You, let me show you here. It's it's just you know pot metal, pretty cheap Chinese stuff. Nothing, you know, nothing fancy. Uh, you know, this is what it looks like on the bottom here. Um, surprisingly, I mean, it plays pretty decent. Let's see if I can. <laughs> it I mean it plays pretty decent again with a helix you know you can almost pretty much make any guitar sound pretty good um, the action when I first got it was super low I mean right now I think it's at about I don't know I've been you know I've been um, I've been toying with higher action lately uh, just to kind of see you know what what it feels like I've always played with low at really low action all my life um, and I've, you know, just read interviews of like Van Halen, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix. I mean, Stevie Ray Vaughan, of course, you know, super high action, but they, a lot of them used really high, high action compared to what most people use. So I have enough guitars. I figured I would just experiment, you know, with one and see, I mean, it's, it's hard to do like the, you know, the. It's a little harder to do that kind of stuff, but you know, really good for the. It's, it works pretty good for that kind of stuff. Um, it's supposed to be, like I said, so you know, the Jimmy Page guitar, let's see if it. It's got a little, I feel like it's got a little buzz somewhere, maybe like right here. Anyway, so again, it was super cheap. Um, I, there, there's a, I just noticed when I was getting ready to start the video and play it, the, uh, the wires I think are loose in here. Uh, either in here or somewhere down here because uh, it's kind of fl uh, flickering. So I'm going to need to fix that. But all in all, I mean, again, you know, with these chipsins, you kind of get what you get, right? Y you know, this guy, I don't know what it had on it originally. Oh, and the, you know, they, they painted, looks like they painted the binding. They tried to, you know, I guess, amber it or age it, if you can see how it's yellow, right? But then up at the top, they painted it. They even painted the nut, and you can see some of it's like chipping off, right? I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's, you know, again, they're, then you get what you pay for. Um, I don't know how much this guy paid for this, but for like a mess around guitar, or if I was ever, you know, gigging somewhere, it's really not a bad idea. If you think about it, right? If you can get this guitar to play exactly the way you want it to play, uh, and it'll sound good. You know, a lot of famous musicians, they leave their number ones at home and they have like Fender or Gibson make them replicas uh, to, you know, to take out on the road. So in case something happens to the original one, obviously those guitars are a lot more expensive, but kind of the same concept. You know, if you spend your hard earned money on, let's say a, a real Les Paul, you know, maybe you paid 1500 to 2000 bucks for it. You know, it, you, you want to gig it, but you know, I mean, people steal shit today. Right or some people are careless and Gibson's break so easy somebody knocks it over, you know I don't know it, it's not a bad idea to have like a backup or a replica or something that you know kind of looks the part but you know it's not it's not real. I know there's a lot of people who comment on my videos you know oh you know Chipsons are trash you're stealing from Gibson and blah 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 blah. You know I mean I guess yes and no you know everybody has their own opinion but I mean I don't know if I'm necessarily stealing from Gibson. 
you know, I own a real Les Paul and they're now I got that real Les Paul for $900. It was like eight, I think it was 850, 900 bucks, something like that. Well, they're over two grand now. I have no plans on buying another Les Paul unless I win the lottery or something. So I don't really see how me personally, I'm stealing from Gibson. I mean, I'm buying, I, I guess I'm getting, I didn't pay money for this and I'm getting a fake guitar, but I'm not taking money out of Gibson's pocket because it's not like I went to Guitar Center and said, oh, I'm gonna buy a Jimmy Page custom Les Paul, which I think costs, what, 10,000 or whatever the price is, or any Les Paul, and said, no, I'm gonna get a Chipson instead. Then I would be, then Gibson would be losing money. Uh, maybe the guy who originally owned this, you know, stole money from Gibson. I had not planned on buying another Les Paul. Um, but I mean, and holding this thing too, you know, you, you, I mean, you, you would know it's, this thing is so light. Uh, you, nobody's mistaken this thing for a Les Paul. Uh, so anyway, but that's, uh, you know, that's, this is the, the chips in here. Uh, I do have another video coming out soon for, I got a Fender, a 1993, uh, made in Japan Strat that I got over the holidays that, uh, I keep, I keep wanting to make video on, but I, again, I forget with work and, you know, stuff, sometimes it's hard for me to get out here. So I'll give you kind of one, a once over up and down so you can see what it looks like. So we'll start from here just so you can kind of, you know, just get a kind of once over, you know, go to the side here. Here's the back. I mean, again, it's not a bad looking guitar, especially from far away. Um, I don't really think it looks like Jimmy Page's. I mean, it might be kind of close, but it's definitely not, uh, you know, I don't think anybody's going to mistake. Just that headstock gets me. The headstock and that freaking truss rod cover. Like, oh, God, this drives me nuts. But, yeah, you can see maybe if you can or can't, there's no scarf joint here. These locking tuners are pretty nice, too. So that's it. Uh, any questions, let me know. I appreciate you watching.